Hi, this is Beverly Cole for Sparkle and Sprinkle, and I'm going to have some more tips and techniques for you today with digital stamps and card making in general. The first two sets we're going to use are the Koi Pond uh, digital bundle that you can get from Sparkle and Sprinkle with some bonus uh, images. Here is a digital printout of bubbles and the sentiment, which is a bonus sentiment in the digital set. And I'm covering them with some glue so that I can add some dimension and sparkle. For the first two bubbles, I'm using glitter and our ever popular glitter called Cloud Nine, which is a beautiful, sparkly, semi translucent glitter so that it's going to be able to show the bubbles through the glitter once it's dry. Tap it off. You see? Now for the next bubble, which is the largest one, which is going to help us to have a focal point on our card, I'm filling it in with glue. And this is a two-way glue, which means it dries sticky. You have to have a sticky surface for the glitter to adhere. And once again, glitter. Now this is sea spray, ultra fine glitter. Such a beautiful color. But I missed some spots. So quick a glue pen to the rescue, just filling in the empty spots, putting a little more glitter on there and tapping it off and I'm good to go. Oh, one more little spot. I love these bubbles, they're so versatile. Just brush off the excess. Now I have some spots where some glue, probably from my fingers, transferred to the card, but that's not a problem when you have an adhesive pickup square. It will rub away the glue and the glitter. Now I'm gonna use some terrific tape on the back of my focal point but just a little tip here, if you have a weak spot or even a clipped area, use a little dimensional glue on the back and let it dry, which I didn't do here. Let it dry and it will strengthen that weak area or that cut area. Don't ever throw out an image if you cut it. You could glue it together with dimensional glue and it's perfect. Now I'm, a pl I'm placing this in the corner and the reason it's taking me so long is I'm trying to decide. I know I want to leave part of it hanging off the edge because I'm going to put a border around and I want to tie the image into the border. So I press it into place. Of course, the, of course the glitter is all dry now. And this digital image is one that I colored with alcohol markers when I created it. So the colors are perfect and there are more color uh, choices in the digital set. So I trimmed the one edge that I didn't need hanging over. Now this is the set of background digital papers that we're using. Don't ever throw anything away. I don't know how many times I've said that, but um, I had this piece of paper left over after I printed it and I didn't want to waste it. So I needed to make it bigger. It didn't quite fit. So what I did was cut it diagonally. The space will be underneath my art so you won't see it and your eye will kind of fool you, even though there are corners where it doesn't quite fit, that being the right top corner and the left bottom corner, this gives you enough color in the background to set off your art. See? Perfect. Save all those pieces that you spent time and money printing out. You'll use them. I'll make sure. We're going to have some videos on how to use your leftover digital images and paper coming up. Now with some dimensional glue, once again, I'm filling in the last two bubbles. No glitter on these. I love the way the digital, I mean the dimensional glue, dries clear with a raised surface. So these will just be left to be clear just like bubbles are.
And sometimes you might have a couple little bubbles in the dimensional glue and you can use a pin to pop them. But I think for these bubbles, a few little bubbles inside the bubbles would be just perfect. Now I'm using tiny dots of the dimensional glue to make some spots looking like dew drops or water splashes on my lily pad. I really had fun drawing these lily pads. I do work for my own photographs. So going out near ponds, we have quite a few of them here in Florida. You can really get some beautiful images. I even went in an airboat and picked some of the pods, which is uh, what the one of the bonus images is in that. Now this is our second card, and we're using Birdsong, the digital set, and I printed them out on uh, regular cardstock, and I made a border by repeating the three little eggs. Now once again, I'm going to use dimensional glue. And I did run my background uh, piece of cardstock through my embossing machine with a, an embossing folder that looks like wood. I just thought it was perfect to go along with these images of eggs and nests. So once again, here we are covering all of the little eggs with the dimensional glue. And once again, I will, as I speed this up, uh, I'll hopefully finish what I'm saying, um, we will use some more of the Cloud 9 on these. Now, when I uh, was doing this video, I needed them to dry. So I tried a kind of a strange way of drying them. I walked around the house looking for somewhere I could dry them. And my dryer doesn't get hot on top, so that wasn't an answer. Sometimes I put them under my craft light, but I needed them to dry quickly. So I came up with kind of an interesting way. Um, I laid them across the top of my tart burner. You just have to make sure your tart burner doesn't have any tart wax on the edge so that it doesn't transfer to the piece of cardstock while it's sitting there heating up the images. And I have a picture of it here coming up. It's kind of strange and I tried it but I did get a little bit of wax on it, so I decided to put it back under my craft light, raised up on a jar, and it worked just fine. Now, using the rubber set, I stamped the sentiment with the rubber set onto my, bowl, my uh, glass mat to measure how big of a die I would need. It's easy, you know, you just wipe it off when you're done. And I decided these two would fit inside each other perfectly. So I went ahead and I stamped my image with some uh, VersaFine Clear Nocturne ink, which is an embossable ink. Stays wet quite a long time. Whoops, well, that wasn't very smart. Let's try the other side. Good thing paper has two sides and I only need one, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and emboss this with my very favorite embossing powder, Yes, you know it. Midnight Madness. Black with Sparkle. We have several black with sparkle, but this is my favorite one. Just gives a perfectly sparkly, perfectly uh, black embossed image. Now I'm attaching my dies so they don't move with some washi tape because I have had the move, which is frustrating when you've spent some time stamping. And I'm going to run both of them through my die cut machine. I have two tones of tan and they're going to be perfect on my card. Here they are. And you know, digital stamps are so versatile. I would love to answer any questions that you might have or any comments. If you leave them in the in the comment area below, I would be more than happy to answer any of your questions or use some of your suggestions for future videos.
Okay, so we're going to do some ink on the edges with the Jumbo Sponge Dauber. And this is Pine Cone Versifying Ink. And then, since it's embossable, I'm going to use some Brown Fizz Embossing Powder, which is a brown with some glitter and sparkle in it. Tap it off, and I'm just going to heat, heat the edges a bit. It's very subtle. I like subtle. I don't like things that jump off and hit you in the face. <laughs> Just the right amount of sparkle. And now I did decide to dress this up and using the texture brush, I'm very lightly tapping ink onto this with the pine cone ink. And because it's embossable, I'm going to go ahead and use that brown fizz again just to give it some dimension and some sparkle to the background of our tag. Heat emboss it. And then I used the jumbo dauber and the, and the pine cone ink to ink the edges of my sentiment. And then using a, now that's the mistake side that I stamped incorrectly that I'm putting the foam square on. And then we'll just attach that to the tag. And there we are. Now that's a tag. Time for a coffee break. I need some coffee. I've been up for hours. <laughs> I love this background. The aqua paper is so beautiful with these eggs that are already colored for me. It's, no matter how hard I try, it seems I've always got something on my card. Might even be cat hair. I do have two cats, and one is a Maine Coon, so he's pretty furry. So here are our images and this piece of jute ribbon. And I'm going to show you a little trick, another little tip to tie the bow with two loops, which may be the way you learn to tie your shoes. It's not the way I learned, but I know some people have learned that way. You tie a bow and you just play with the loops, pulling it back, tightening it, pulling it back, tightening it just enough, not too tight, till you have a perfect little bow. Then you're going to take the two tails of the bow and we're going to make them into a band across the top of our card. Now to attach this, we're going to use some of our terrific tape, very versatile tape, easy to rip. Just grab some off of my tape dispenser, which we sell at Sparkle and Sprinkle. I put two pieces on the back of my card. This won't show because it's going to be on a card base. And then the ribbon will stick. And if it's not right where I want it, I can easily peel it off that terrific tape and reposition it because it's cloth. It's easy to do that. So how pretty is that? And it picks up the color in the, in the uh, nest. Spring is coming. Here in Florida, it's pretty much already uh, springy, although not all the trees have their leaves yet. We do have plenty of plants that are blooming. More terrific tape on the back of the nest. And I'll place this just overlapping the border. Gives it some more dimension. Makes our card look less flat. And my little tricky tag. You know I like to attach my tags so they don't move around. And I can just tear off the extra here and attach this as if it were hanging from the ribbon. There, so cute. So cute, but you know that bow wants to move around. So here's another tip. Take a tiny piece of terrific tape and make your own glue dot. Peel the sticky off of the back, which you can easily do if you stick it to your finger. That paper should peel right off, just like a glue dot peels off its backing paper. And you're just going to attach it to the back of the bow and roll it up a bit. And it acts just like a glue dot. Look at that. Done.
almost done. I'm mounting this on a piece of a card base made of craft cardstock, picking up on those neutral tones. And when you put your terrific tape across the back, you can, of course, go right over the ends of that ribbon, which actually will even help hold the ribbon in place. And carefully place it. I start up in the corner and I check the top corner and then the bottom corner and edge. And if I get one side right, the other side will naturally be right. You just gotta start with the correct amount. And mine would be an eighth of an inch around the edges. And there's my card. But of course I can't stop. <laughs> I want to make my eggs. At first I thought maybe just dots, but then I decided to fill them in completely with more dimensional glue, which is going to give me three-dimensional eggs. Look how beautiful those are. Be sure to hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. Have fun.